Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that... Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Juan Newsom. Thank you for coming, tuning in today, all listeners, conversationalists, thrill seekers. We got a good show for you today. Um, of course, we're going to do a rundown of what's on social media. Um, also, Will and Jada Part 2. It gets even better and better. And there are some comedic responses to it. It's wild and it's been all over social media. Uh, we're going to do sports. Um, also, I wanted to introduce a comedian that I've been following for a while on social media. He's always trending. He does comedy shows. Um, Ryan Davis. And there is an associated top 10. So, folks, here we go. Let's get started latest in social media news I mean there's a lot of news out there um, the act, the actress from the show Glee as you know uh, Naya Rivera she was found dead um, in the lake in Lake Piru so uh, at least the family can have somewhat some closure um, at first they could not find the body they found her son in um, in the boat asleep her four year old son um, also Priscilla Presley's son, he's also passed away, um, age 27. That would be Elvis's grandson. Um, let's see what we got here up next. I'm always flipping through folks, so you gotta excuse some of my pauses. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, you know, the the buzz, you know, of course, I mentioned Will and Jada part two. <laughs> um, so that's all over social media. We have a lot of material for that. Um, let's see here. And let's see, they're making a big deal on social media about Tamara Mowry Housley uh, confirms, confirming her departure from the real. So... Let's see here. I'll get it, give you a few excerpts from the article. Tamara Mowry Housley is the latest host to lead the real daytime talk show. The veteran actress has co-hosted since um, its 2013 debut. She took Instagram money to confirm her exit from the Emmy Award winning talk show following then the alleged reports. Let's see here. For seven years, my home and heart has been at the real wrote Maori Housley. The friendships that I made there will last a lifetime and people that I had had a blessing to interview changed my life for the better. So proud of what all the ladies and I have accomplished there. Um, including two uh, deserved NAACP Image Awards and Daytime Emmy. However, all the good things must come to an end. It's now with bittersweet smile that I announce that I'm moving on from the real. She goes on to thank everyone. Wow. Oh, Wow. It's kind of political. I hate to do this, but man raises a hundred k to purchase and donate Goya products after boycott call. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go into it, but you all will know what's going on. Okay, another rumor: the Sony Sony is gonna reveal the PS5 price and release date tonight. It looks like a very nice console. Um, if you can go to GameRent.com. Um, it'll give you the details um, for that. 
Also, let's see here. Special feature on LeBron James. It's trending on social media. While LeBron James winning a title inside the NBA bubble of uncertainty could be his greatest feat yet. And that's very true, especially with this season and the COVID and so forth. And then there's a lot of things going on with the team. Ray John Rondo is now injured and they were really counting on his veteran experience there. So here it is. Among the myriad of uncertainties and surprises that will end up defining this bizarre NBA season rest a chance for LeBron James if he can lead an already depleted Los Angeles Lakers to a championship to notch on one of his greatest accomplishments. Michael Jordan had his flu game. LeBron James could have his pandemic championship. Forget that silly talk about the asterisk being attached to the 2020 COVID-19 NBA champ. Months away from the game and still uncertain result. Resulting fallout for players, home court advantage, and mere memory, the angst and the difficulties of being locked away for the three months in pursuit of greatness, the possible positive tests capable of recalibrating the balance of power in any series at any moment. All this and more would make the most striking, strange, and telling test of LeBron James's career. Wow. I believe that. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> also, <laughs> again, Will and Jada on the time and trending in social media. I, I look at these. I, I look at my stuff through an algorithm, folks. So, Will and Jada, the timeline of Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith open relationship drama. Wow. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna save this for our segment. So, but that's. But that's also something that's um, trending. Uh, let's see here. Oh, man, this was a huge one um, this past weekend on social media. Pro Former pro football player Cal Quero gets dragged and apologized after questioning Jill Scott is attractive. Oh, yeah, here we go. And I saw this, and it's on. it's mainly on Twitter. Uh, so former NFL and XFL linebacker Kyle Quiro issued an apology to Jill Scott for seemingly questioning why the singer songwriter is thought to be a sex symbol on the night of Friday July 10th a 25 year old athlete asked in a now deleted treat people are attracted to Jill Scott and by no means is she ugly but y'all sexually aroused by her fans instantly jumped to the Golden Singers defense expressing that they have believed Scott's attractive she's actually fucking excuse me my language effing beautiful someone said another person asked who is this clown other people accused the former Dallas Cowboys player fat shaming the actress wow how dare he let me guess he only date exotic skinny traps Kyle Quirro seemingly questions while Jill Scott. Shortly after he received a backlash for fans, Quirro admitted in a now deleted tweet that he messaged was poorly worded and conveyed. By the evening, Saturday, July 11th, the New Jersey native shared an extensive apology on Twitter and implied that he did not intend to make anyone feel that their appearance was not good enough. First and foremost, I'm going to read it. First and foremost, I would like to apologize to Miss Jill Scott. He started, the topic of your beauty should not have been shared over social media for public discourse. There's truly no excuses or explanations to be made. My comments were distasteful and unbecoming of a black man to speak negatively of a black woman under any circumstance. Second, I would like to apologize to those who were also offended by my posts. <laughs> I'm aware that layers of hurt peel back with my words. I have no intention to make people feel less than, but they're simply not good enough. Intention does not equate to impact. I am aware how much more important that one's impact than their intention. Knowing this, I'm still offended a large number of people and that for I am deeply sorry. Kuro concluded his message by explaining that he would use his platform to promote positivity and empowerment within our community and then praise Scott for shedding light on injustices in the nation. The apology came after the Philadelphia native noticed she was a hot topic on children responded to this message by speaking out against racial injustice and crimes against black women. Wow. Wow. That is deep. 
Okay. <laughs> I don't want to do local news. I mean, it's Jersey. Okay. Da 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 da. Coronavirus, Russell Westbrook, Nikola Jokic, Spencer. So NBA players are testing positive for this. So, and you know basketball is tough. Uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to go into sports. I don't want to wait it till our sports section of the podcast. But y- you're always touching the other players and so forth, and, and you're passing the ball and the sweat. It's. I would think it's a little easier in, in football. You, at least you have the padding and the clothing and so forth. Um, but in basketball, I can see how it's that much tougher, especially when, you know, I played organized basketball. When the defense, you were a lot more closer. You could hand check. It was a lot much more of a physical game. Okay. Let's see here. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going entertainment what's trending on social media la 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 oh yeah four teenagers charged in the murder of pop smoke that's trending on social media as well People are feeling a sense of justice, uh, particularly on Twitter and Facebook. Um, if you can just look those up, uh, pound pop smoke uh, would be the hashtag, hashtag pound pop smoke. Um, that's one of the ways you can find this information. Okay. Amazon stock is at uh, $3,200, folks. <laughs> That's also trending on Twitter. Mm, not doing politics, but this is informational. California is halting on the reopenings. So, if you're in California, you know, you bars and movie theaters and stuff, they're putting a hold on that. Okay. Wow, Johnny Depp, and this is trending um, in Twitter on ce- under celebrity. Johnny Depp claims he discovered it a, at a meeting with his accountant in 2016 that he lost 650 million dollars of movie earnings. How do you do that? Johnny Depp claims he discovered a meeting at accountant in 2016 that he lost two 650 million movie earnings immediately prior to an incident when he was alleged to have been violent towards his then wife Amber Heard a court heard on Monday fifth day his libel trial in London against the publisher of the Sun newspaper Depp is suing news group newspapers journalist Dan Wooten for an article on the Sun website that describes him as a wife beater Depp denies that he was violent towards Heard whom he was married to from 2015 to 2017 Ugh. okay this sounds ugly I mean, it's trending, so I just wanted to let you guys know. Okay. Police are still investigating uh, Naya Rivera's, you know, how things happen. So um, I would expect that you were going to see more news on that. Okay. Okay, Harvey Weinstein is proposing a 19 million settlement with his victims. Challenge, proposed deal. Okay. Hong Kong cinemas to close after a third wave of Corona. Of course, let's see here. Okay. Paris Jackson shares new photo with brother Prince Michael says it's always fun reconnecting. Nice, the Jackson kids. Kelly Preston died. Wow. Age 57. I know. We keep losing them. (laughs) Uh, Let's see here, folks. 
So folks, we are going to take a quick commercial break. Again, I'm your host, Juan Newsom. This is the GSMC social media podcast sponsored by the GSMC podcast network. And we'll be right back in just one moment. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Folks, welcome back. This is Juan Newsom with the GSMC Social Media Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast and Network. We're back from commercial break. First segment, we discuss latest trending topics. Now, next, we're going to talk about Will and Jada because we apparently have new information. Of course, everyone's talking. Speaking of the video where they had their um, red table talk. Social media is going crazy. I wanted to play something else that I found for for you. On <laughs> there, there was a remix. There was Will and Jada's voice dubbed, and someone played some music behind. You got to hear it to believe it, folks. Here it is. I want you to hear it. You and I decided we were going to take our space, and what happened? Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August. I got into an entanglement with August. An entanglement with August. With August. With August. An entanglement with August. An entanglement with August. An entanglement with August. With August. 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 Entanglement with August. An entanglement with August. An entanglement. Folks, that is hilarious. Uh, the name of the video is Jada Pinkett Smith Entanglement Remix. Um, that's on YouTube. Um, <laughs> there are also like a lot of responses from uh, from comedians. <laughs> last, I think the last show that I did, we had a response from uh, comedian Bill Bellamy and Ryan Davis. Uh, here's Bill's take on it. I'm just gonna wait. So breaking news! Breaking news! Will and Jada on the red table came out and you know basically had to confirm what August Alcina was talking about now I got all kinds of things going on in my mind and I'm just being I'm on my grown man right now I'm on my grown man I'm on my grown man I'm just on my grown man right now I'm being straight up with y'all how I feel about it it's from the heart I'm keeping it a buck with you okay cool first and foremost it ain't none of our business period Nobody. Ain't nobody business. What Will and Jada want to do is on their own. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it 1,000, okay? First of all, in real world, in the real world, this new social media stuff, personal business should be handled personally. You feel me? I'm just being honest, right? Like, only reason Will and Jada, in my opinion, had to go out and say that is because August Alcina was out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? He he exercised no discretion. This is why I got to do how to be a player part two. 
because y'all out here in these streets reckless. Ain't nobody know, y'all don't know the rules of engagement in this game. Cool. First of all, the key word today is discretion. It's a lot of, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of power. And, and you know, if y'all don't know the insides of the game, I'm just being real. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of power. That's a brand right there. Like I said, Will and Jada, that's a two piece. That, that's a, that's a two piece suit. That's a, no vest. No vest. August, Arsena, we not wearing a vest. This is suit. It's a two piece. It's pants and it's the jacket. That's it. All that other stuff don't matter. Okay. In my opinion, then this is just me. I'm on the outside just like you. That should have been a discussion in a diner. That's the discussion you have in a diner or in a car. And it would usually be an old car, like a Cadillac or an El Dorado, or you in an old Vega, or maybe you in a, a Cutlass Supreme. You and your lady, y'all sitting there quiet. You smoking a cigarette, and y'all not looking at each other. She here. You here, and y'all just discussing it. And y'all just having a, a real moment, like, yo, boo, I'm just being real with you. What's going on? Talk to me. And you try to have a peaceful, intelligent conversation with your lady, right? Now, August Arsena got up in the midst of something, you know? That's, that's heavyweight, bro. That's heavyweight. That's heavyweight right there. You know what I'm saying? That's why we had a new word of the day, entanglement. Entanglement mean it's a bunch of shit that got together, that got out of control. Entanglement is wrapped all around and crazy. Started this way, went left, went right, and the shit got out of control. Boom! Hit the wall. That's entanglement, a.k.a. relationship. Cool. Bam. Boom. Right? Now, here's what I'll say. Another word of the day is called OPP. If you're under 30, you don't know nothing about OPP. Yeah, you know me. OPP is other people's property. That means that when the key word is property, that's not yours. He done went naughty by nature on him. <laughs> I can't believe that he went naughty by nature on them. <laughs> but in a sense, he's right. I mean, you know. When you play those games, there are rules to this games. Now, there's another brother who has the best take on it. I want you to hear this. And I've read some of his books, Mr. Derek Jackson. And he has a totally, totally different. I want you to hear this. Give it, give me a few moments. Bear with me. But I want you to hear what this brother has to say about the Red Table Talk. Bad marriage for life. <laughs> So, like a lot of y'all, I got a chance to watch the most recent Red Table Talk episode where Jada and Will are discussing a lot of the conversation around what Jada and August Alcina had. They call it an entanglement or whatever the fuck she said. Anyway, despite some of the side eyeing, I actually thought it was overall a pretty good conversation. Or at least had a lot of good aspects. Like, I love Will's maturity. You know, I think he was a rare display of a guy who can actually take what he dishes out because a lot of dudes can't. So I thought that was really cool. I love their honesty between them two. I loved a lot of the revelations that Jada had, and I thought it was a lot to learn from that. But it was something that stuck out to me in addition to that whole entanglement bullshit. Like when I saw that rhetoric that she used in order to downplay what she had done, I knew there was some more bullshit coming. And sure enough, it did. I don't know if y'all caught that, but there was a segment where she was talking about all the ways that she learned from this painful time. And she talked about, you know, as I came through it, I noticed some things about me and you talking about her and Will. And then August decided to end all communication, which she understood. But I think that was an oversimplification. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it wasn't nearly that simple. I'm willing to bet it was a whole lot more like, you know, Will told her she, he wanted nothing to do with her. So she chose low-hanging fruit, which was a guy who was super broken and came to her for healing and to be fixed and, and appropriately in that context, not as a romantic anything, but came to her, said, hey, you are a therapist and you got this healing energy. Help me out. And because she needed a romantic or a sexual placeholder, she used them for just that. Fast forward, now her and Will decide they want to reconcile for whatever reason. Now she has to go back to August Alcina and tell him you're demoted or discard him in some kind of way from the romantic space that he had begun to occupy. But August Alcina already had caught, not just caught feelings, fell in love with her. And to fall in love with somebody, you have to open up your whole heart. And once you open up your whole heart, you cannot accept just a fraction of the love that you once got. 
Keep in mind, August is broke, or he came into the situation broken. So even her whole love wouldn't have been enough. So of course, at this point, he's even more broken than what he first brought himself to her as. And of course, he cannot handle just a piece of her or just a fraction of her. So he says, you know what? I got to get out of the situation altogether. Now, why is that significant? Because too many times we get caught up in the celebration of couples and all that they went through, all the betrayals that they overcame or survived, all the infidelities or whatever have you, and we forget about the third party in this situation. I'm not talking about the third party person that knows what they get themselves into, whether it's a homewrecker or somebody that, you know, is in sound mind and know that they are gambling. They're rolling their dice with a separated person and that person could absolutely reconcile with their spouse. I'm talking about the third party that didn't ask for none of this shit. Whether they weren't told the truth about what was going on at home, so they had their peace disturbed, and now they all fucked up and sucked into the drama, or in a situation like this, a person who was basically preyed on in their most vulnerable state. And the reason why we need to talk about this is not to bash Jada or come down on her. First off, I'm not judging her. Uh, I don't know if this is a news flash to anybody, but everybody's human. Your favorite mentor, myself included, your favorite teacher, educator, pastor, everybody's human and capable of fucking up, and we all gonna fuck up some more before we leave this earth. Maybe not in the you know, form of an entanglement, maybe so, but we all gonna fuck up, so it's not about judging her. This is about, if we're gonna make this a learning lesson, we have to learn from all of it, all of it. And the less we talk about this aspect, the more we normalize it. But I know those producers of the show, they're not about to push this to the forefront because it doesn't really add to the perceived authenticity of the Red Table talk. And then with Jada's very calm demeanor and all the love that we have for Will Smith and his whole family, it's easy to kind of gloss over the predatory nature of what they're referencing. And it's exactly that, like it's predatory. It's predatory to be made fully aware of what somebody's dealing with, how broken they are, and all the things that August Alcina has going on with him, all the people that have died in his life, turned their back on him, that were supposed to love him, and then how she just introduced him to a love and a stability and support that she couldn't maintain. That's predatory as hell. So, Wow, that that's loaded. It's about the end. Here we go. So it's like, yeah, I'm glad. One of my takeaways was like, man, I'm glad that they unlocked this new expert level of commitment and growth and you know, despite all that, all the hard times and all the hard dicks life to throw at them, I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? And I'm cool with them hoisting up the trophy of 25 plus years in marriage and counting. I thought it was a little cringeworthy how they fist bump to a bad marriage for life. But nonetheless, ultimately, I'm glad for them making it through. But at what cost? Like, do we just continue to ignore when people consume these third parties who didn't deserve this shit? in order to achieve that higher level? Do we just ignore it because we love Jada so much? Do we ignore, you know, just, just chewing somebody up and spitting them out and then licking our fingers because the learned lessons were so tasty and so nourishing to become this evolved version of ourselves? Meanwhile, ignoring the fragmented uh, pieces of a person that they left in their wake. Because honestly, I would even go so far as to say that part is even more fucked up than the cheating itself or stepping out or having an affair. Like, Jada can do whatever she wants with her vagina, and if Will like it, I love it. He's come to terms with it, by the way. Will ass is not innocent. Just because we're talking about Jada shit don't mean that he's innocent. Nonetheless, they got each other at the end of the day. They can soothe each other. They can lick each other's wounds. But for the third party, that person who got brought into this shit and didn't ask for none of it, didn't deserve none of it, who do they have? Who, who's rooting for their happy ending? What do they have to show for their involvement in this? Nothing but a broken heart that nobody cares about. So. And folks, he's right. He is absolutely right. My opinion is that the whole situation is just a hot mess. It's just a hot mess. And, you know, the only reason why we have so much invested in Will and Jada right now is because people are bored people are tired of politics it's corona you know there's so many corona lockdowns we just don't have anything else to do right now this stuff has been happening with them just to just to show you there was a in my first segment i discovered there was a timeline of jada pinkett smith and will smith open relationship drama this was trending um on twitter actually so um, let's see here. If you go to cosmopolitan.com, um, it will be there. So, yeah, yeah. So people thought, you know, in 2011, they thought Jada was apparently hooking up with Mark Anthony. So back in 2011, 
for example, 94, let's see, that's when they met, 97, Jada and Will got married, 2011, rumors, Jada was hooking up with Mark Anthony, the couple released a statement, 2013, uh, her we were, okay 2013 she had to clarify whether they were in an open marriage let's see here 2015 Jada gave an interview with Howard Stern saying I'm not the kind of woman that believes that a man's got not going to be attracted to other women it's just not realistic just because your man is attracted to another woman doesn't mean he doesn't love you so kind of giving you know weight to some of the rumors 2015 August 3rd amid yet another round of rumors Will and Jada were splitting Will hit Facebook and denied they were getting a divorce and then Jada confirmed on Twitter the king has spoken 2017 Jada and August attended the BET Awards together 2017 Jada showed up on watch what happens live said the craziest rumors you heard about her family that she and Will are swingers that's the craziest one it's constant I'm like yo I wish I wish during the interview with Angela Lee August claimed that he and Jada had dated this is June 30th 2020 so that's pretty much the timeline and then to end it off July 10th 2020 Jada and Will on the red table. So you can catch that on YouTube. July 13th. Let's see here. Backlash from the Believe It or Not, but Will Smith fans all good. Following the red table drama, well, at least US Weekly says. So that's the complete timeline, folks. Man, that went by so fast. There was so much more I wanted to say. Um, so, folks, we're coming to the end of this segment. I'm your host, Juan Newsom with the GSMC social media uh, podcast brought to you by the GSMC podcast network. Uh, we're going to break for a commercial. Thanks for having us. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back, folks. This is Juan Newsom, GSMC Productions. Uh, this is the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. First segment, we did Trending News. Second segment, we did Will and Jada, Part 2. Third segment, uh, we're going to do um, some more Trending News. I wanted to do Ryan Davis, but... You know, I want to be careful about some of the material that we put out. Uh, he is a comedian, and some of the stuff is, um, you know, explicit. So I want to make sure that I'm able to kind of block some of it or, or um, you know, or not block some of it, but, you know, kind of kind of edit some of the curse, curse words before I kind of put that one out. So I'll, that'll be something that I'll work on. It's still funny without all of that, but, you know, just the content and what, 
in which the in which the comedy is kind of conveyed. It's I think it's pretty funny, and plus it's he's probably the 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 comedian that's trending the best on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, because um, he talks about controversial subjects like R. Kelly and so forth. So, um, so on more trending news, um, Steve Harvey apologizes for dropping the f bomb after the NFL legends penis answer on Family Feud. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so I guess. So they were having a family feud episode, um, and and it was the battle of the NFL greats under the celebrity family feud. And let's see here, NFL Hall of Famers, one legend in particular, Bruce Smith, provided both hosts Steve Harvey and viewers one of the most legendary answers in the game history while on the field. Fast money round the game. Smith asked if Captain Hook was moonlighting and handyman, he might his hook with what tool? To which Smith replied, a hammer. Unfortunately, his teammate Michael Urban had already asked that answer, so he was forced to provide a second answer. Smith's second answer surprised everyone when he immediately followed up with a penis. <laughs> Harvey had already begun asking the next question which he already stopped and said what the f did he after several seconds of laughter from the audience and participant harvey profusely apologized i swear i'm sorry it just came out said harvey i don't even know where that came from everyone on the set found the answer to be hilarious and views viewers at home were equally impressed many people from the fan sports personality took to twitter um to reveal to revel in the hilarious response <laughs> it's like all over Twitter. Oh my god. Folks, I want to play this audio for you. Here it goes. If Captain Hook was moonlighting as a handyman, he might replace his hook with what tool? A hammer. Mm -hmm. Try again. A penis. <laughs> Steve could not believe it. I mean, he was, he, he went off. He went off. I'm sorry. We can't go up here. I'm sorry. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We can't go up here. I'm sorry. I, 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 swear, I swear I'm sorry. That, that just came out. I don't even know where that came from. Celebrity. <laughs> so he just dropped the F bomb. Steve couldn't believe it. <laughs> That is hilarious, man. That is straight up hilarious. Also trending in the news, Grant Mahara, Miss Buster's host, dies at 49. So, uh, great show. Great show. Once an electrical engineer, um, eventually he um, ended up doing... Um, some spots on the Discovery Channel and, and ended up doing Mythbusters. So, always, always like this show. Let's see here. They have a fascinating write up on Judge Judy. That's also trending on Twitter as well and on Facebook and, and Yahoo. A lot of these links are ended, ended up on Yahoo. I don't know why, but a lot of Yahoo links are being passed passed around on social media okay mm, I think I mentioned earlier Kelly Preston dies uh, the wife of John Travolta that's also trending they're paying tribute so she had a two year um, battle with breast, breast cancer my heart goes out to that family um, especially John he lost his son not too long ago so you know, his son was his everything. Now he's lost his wife as well. So I thought some prayers go out to the family. Ashley Graham shares intimate video of her breastfeeding her son. <laughs> oh, wow. And this is on Twitter as well and Instagram. Oh, wow. She calls him Miss Latcher. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> Cute little boy. From what you can see, they don't show his face. Okay. Star Trek's coming out with a new show. It's a cartoon show. It's called The Lower Decks. So. <laughs> it's going to be a. Looks like it's going to be a pretty good ant series. Let's see here. So there have been leaks online of the new um, Dragon Ball Z manga episode uh, where they're fighting the new villain Moro. So you can Google that. That's oh, and also while we're talking about anime and cartoons. Apparently there is a gentleman whose Twitter name, let's see here, let me get this Twitter name for you, goes by Raise of Fist. He's a martial artist, particularly a, a capoeira maestro, and he's asking for help to raise awareness of his skills so he can get on the new Avatar show. Here it is. I need your help, Twitter. I'm trying to get in the, on the, in on this new Avatar show at Netflix. Help your boy be seen by the right people. And so he does an array of moves in accordance to the elements um, of the Avatar show. I'm, I can just only play the audio for you, of course. Very good. I mean, very crisp move. So he's raise a fist at all underscore F eight O eight Z. So if you go there, you can kind of see the videos. Um, some great responses. He's definitely a very skilled um, martial artist. So ten thousand likes, twenty thousand hearts. 10,000 shares so wow yeah yeah well I hope he gets out I'll reshare reshare it if you can so help this guy out all right let's see here all right so folks it looks like that's it for segment three um, you know, we wanted to do as much trending news as we could. I don't want to bore you with trending news. We're going to move on to our next segment. Um, this is Juan Newsom. I am your host. This is GSMC Social Media News Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. And we'll be back for our fourth segment. We're going to go into sports. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. We'll be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
Okay, we're back. This is Juan Newsom, GSMC Social Media News Podcast. I'm your host. This is the fourth segment, first segment. Uh, we did Trending News, second segment. We did part two of Will Jada. In segment three, we did more Trending News. And so, folks, we're coming back from our commercial break. Uh, last segment, we're going to do sports. Um... Uh, so trending, trending topics in sports. Um, first, they have a. <laughs> it's funny. Facebook. They have this meme: of these six Chicago Bulls um, in cartoon versus the Golden State Warriors championship team of 2017. And so they're basically saying who who will win between the two. Uh, mostly from from what I'm surveying here, mostly. Most of the responses are bulls. <laughs> I think only the truly insane would give this one to the Warriors, given um, the great amount of defense um, that Chicago Bulls team played. You know, you have Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, two arguably um, of the great, two of the greatest defensive um, players of all time. Also, Dennis Rodman as well one of the best defensive players of all time, one of the best rebounders of all time, and one of the best role players of all time. So, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you, you know, in the in the era of, um, maybe in this era with this era moves, there, this, this era rules, um, the Golden State Warriors might, stand a chance but you know if you're using old era rules with hand checking and physical defense I don't really think so folks I really don't and uh, I know I'm not a minority in this <laughs> also trending uh, let's see here top 10 interior D linemen that list is trending on Facebook and on Twitter, Twitter, this is from an ESPN article. Okay, so Aaron Donald, of course, is number one. I don't. There's no dispute about that. <laughs> I mean, he's the guy. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. What do we have here? Hmm. Top 10. All right. So, folks, they don't have the actual list, but you have some fans on Facebook and Twitter rolling out their top 10 list. So they'll be rolling out this list officially in the next few days. In other news, Cam Newton says that replacing Tom Brady is the elephant in the room. You damn right, Cam. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Quarterback Cam Newton has shared how motivated he is prove to prove is to prove doubters wrong through social media posts. But one topic he hadn't addressed prior to this week was the unique position he's in of possibly replacing six time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady with the New England Patriots. Newton referred to as the elephant in the room. You know who you're coming after. I'm like, Yeah, great, great. What he was, what he is he is great needs not even talking about it. Newton said, but one thing about it though, Coach Josh McDaniel, you're able to call some stuff that you ain't never been able to call now. You're getting a dog. You're getting one of these ticketed uh, ticked off dogs too. And I'm looking at the schedule. I'm like, who we playing? That team passed on me. Okay, that team passed on me. They could have came and got me. Newton, who has not held an introductory news conference since the Patriots officially announced his signing on July the 8th, made the remarks as part of a roundtable discussion on YouTube with receiver Odell Beckham Jr., running back Todd Gurley, and former NFL receiver Victor Cruz. I 
I mean, Cam, when you go back to Cam Newton's comment, that's really it, isn't it? Replacing Tom Brady is going to be an issue. Um, so, we'll see. I'm rooting for him, rooting for Cam this year. So, we'll see what happens. Washington Redskins are changing their name. So officially, as of the day, the Redskins are dropping their name. No word of what they're renaming the team, though, however. So we'll see about that. In other news, due to the NBA quarantine bubble, <laughs> J.R. Smith and Joel M.B. were complaining about the quarantine food. I guess, <laughs> I guess J.R. Smith wasn't really handling it uh having it let's see the nba bubble let's see here mostly because they look like the food you get on the airplane here the, here's the article the biggest headline from disney world and nba bubble have been about the quarantine meals players are receiving mostly because they look like food you get on an airplane there's good news to them after they get through this however we'll get to that but let's start with more criticism about the food upon arrival We'll begin with Joel and B, who criticized Kendra Perkins for his concerns about health and safety in Orlando and later flew to Florida in a full body suit. <laughs> he had some jokes about how he was going to lose weight during the restart. We had uh, we head over to J.R. Smith, who joined the Los Angeles Lakers and reunited, reunited with LeBron James, warning NSFW language ahead. Jer <laughs> So there's a video of J.R. Smith posting the food, and uh, he had a few explicit things to say about the food. This is also a good time to remind that this won't be the food for the next few months there for USA Today. Sports Chef uh, Executive Chef Sean Levin, who has worked with USA U.S. Basketball at the Olympics and other international competitions, will oversee a commercial kitchen where each team can provide one culinary staffer to help prepare additional meals. Also, the league has partnered with six restaurants. There are Frisco's, Joe's Crab Shack, Morton's, Ocean Air Palm, Saltgrass to provide delivery service to team hotels. Those restaurants are part. Laundries, Inc., a restaurant, entertainment, and gaming company owned by Houston Rockets owner Tillman Ferretta. In addition, each team will have a culinary team on campus. To provide meals, their personal chefs can prepare meals off campus and have them delivered to players. Room service is available in multiple restaurants at each of these three resorts where teams are staying will have restaurants open. You can expect some social media posts to come where players <laughs> share the good stuff that's ahead. Wow. Okay. So if you're an NBA player, good news. Your quarantine meals are behind you as the bubble comes to an end. Okay. Other sports. Other news and sports. Okay, folks, thank you for listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast and Network. I'd like to ask you to please remember to subscribe to the show, write a nice review that really helps us. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you, and you have a good day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program